Salutations, 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 everybody. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Timothy Lee Rogers Sr., and I'd like to welcome you to Learn to Trade Futures with yours truly, Lil Timmy Rogers. Again, welcome to Learn to Trade Futures with yours truly, Lil Timmy Rogers. And this is episode three of the series. Now, if you have not watched episode one or two, please go here. Go here to the card and watch episode one and two and then come back and continue on with episode three. Now, learning to trade futures part three. In this episode, we will be reinforcing the concept of institutional order flow, price delivery. Remember the diagram that we had in the last episode where we had the consolidation, expansion, retracement, reversal, price delivery diagram. Speaking of said diagram, it will behoove you to understand all of ICT's concept. Well, not all of but understand his lingo to be able to follow along with this video smoothly without any hiccups because, again, I will be using slides that I took straight from his core content and I will be using terms from his core content. And if you don't understand these terms, then you may be lost. But you don't have to know it to learn something from said video. Now, let's get back into it, shall we? So, reinforcing liquidity concepts and price delivery, right? You have external range liquidity and internal range liquidity, right? External range liquidity, the current trading range will have buy side liquidity above the range high. The current range will have sell side liquidity below the range low, right? What does this mean? These are the liquidity pools that we spoke about in the other series. Liquidity pools are in the form of buy stops and sell stops above highs and below lows, right? Run on liquidity seeks to pair orders with the pending orders, uh, the pending liquidity in the liquidity pools, right? So when a run on stops happen, the algorithm is seeking to pair open orders with pending orders that's in the form of buy stops and sell stops, right? In these liquidity pools, right? External range liquidity runs can be low resistance or high resistance. You always want to be trading in low resistance conditions. We're not going to get into low resistance conditions. We talked about um, order flow, but low resistance um, liquidity runs are ideal. They're ideal. And in its simplest form, low resistance run will be going from external to internal liquidity, right? They, those are the, that will set up the most probable low resistance. But that's not the only condition. That's not the only conditions for low resistance. That's in its simplest form. Internal range liquidity, when current trading range is likely to remain Liquidity voids, fair value gaps, they are expected to be filled, right? But they can also cause gap risk. What is gap risk? Gap risk is when you're in a trade. If you're long and there's a fair value gap or a liquidity void below you, you understand that the algorithm will seek to reprice or rebalance or revisit that gap or imbalance, so that's gap risk to you because you're long and the gap is below your price. So you're anticipating that price will more than likely go reprice that. So you need to account for that for your stop loss, right? Order blocks inside the trading range will be populated with new buy and sell orders, right? The algorithm uses these order blocks to populate new buy and sell orders and they're also using them to offset their hedges, right? When the market consolidates or when the market comes to a higher time frame PD array and it starts to manipulate the market up, meaning that the market the 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 market makers are getting net long when the market starts to come back down, when price starts to come back down and they come back to that same level where that same price level where that order block was, they'll use that order block to offset their hedge and get net short, right? So they got net long here, price went up. And then when price start coming back, they manipulate price back down. When they get to where they got net long at, 
they will offset and get net short to mitigate their hedge over here for getting net long. Also, market maker buy models and sell models will form inside the trading range. So the entire trading range, especially on the, the like the daily and the intraday time frames, you will see market maker sell when it makes the A shape and market maker buy when it makes the U or the V shape models form inside the range. You always want to be thinking like the algorithm, right? And you want to ask yourself, where is price most, where is the most logical area for price to go from here, right? So looking at price, what do you see in price, right? Now, we we can't see anything to the left here, so we're going to just assume that price has come to a higher time frame PD array. And in this case, we're going to say we, we just took out buy side liquidity because price expanded up, right? And it started to consolidate here. So price is consolidating here, and we have a small imbalance that we didn't completely reap. Um, price to to the bottom of the low of and we have another small imbalance here that we haven't repriced to so it's logical to think that price will most likely seek balance because we have already engaged liquidity liquidity and balance right it's most logical to think that price will seek balance in the form of attacking these um, imbalances below price now once price has now that price has expanded to the downside and repriced these imbalances right what is price saying with this move right price is saying i want to continue continue lower to seek sell side right seek sell side somewhere down here to pair with the orders that was accumulated above this buy side right and how is price saying that because we expand it lower than the consolidation area, taking out this short-term low, and it closed below the imbalances that it had to reprice, right? So price is still reaching toward the sale side to pair the orders that they accumulated after going above this buy side. Now, you always want to think like the algo, right? What caused this price to drop? Again, we accumulated shorts and it's buy side liquidity. Price has come down and delivered to the sell side and paired the orders. Now that it has done that, we've come to another higher time frame PD array. What will the market most likely do? We have come to liquidity now it will more, most likely seek balance, right? We have an imbalance here. We have an imbalance here. How far will price go? The market leaves clues. And the clue that it has left for us this time is this order block for a clue as to how far price can logically go. Why is that? Because the algorithm sells as price goes up, not constantly selling as it going up continuously, but as we come to higher time frame PD arrays like swing highs, when the market is ready to manipulate down, it will start to sell as price goes up because the market sells in a premium and buys in a discount. So as the market started to sell, as price was going up, this last up close counter here, the opening price of that last up close counter there is the price that the algorithm remembers that this is where we started to sell. They're manipulating price up by buying it up, but as they're buying it up, they're accumulating these stops up here. They're accumulating these people that's willing to buy. There's buy stops up here. People that's willing to buy at this price, they are soaking up those buy stops to get short. And as they soak up enough buy stops to get short, now they're going down and to pair those with sell stops below. 
Now, the importance of this order block is as they were manipulating price up, they had to buy the price up. So any long positions that's still on at this point, once we trade past the opening price of this candle, you can anticipate price to at some point in time to come back to that order block. Right. That's why that's the spot that you can anticipate price to most likely come to. It's an order block in the premium of this price leg in line with an imbalance and giving it allowance to go all the way up and reprice the entire imbalance. But respect the mean threshold or 50 percent of this order block. These imbalances in this order block, they are the internal liquidity of this price leg and as you see right after coming down into sales stops right price went back up repriced the first imbalance came back down right but notice the bodies of the candle right they're all relatively equal they're not trying to break any lower right so the algorithm is giving you a clue that this area right here they're just soaking up liquidity there's no desire to continue down because the wicks do the damage the bodies tell the story now remember at this point let's go back nothing in this area right here we have not thought about making an entry we are still analyzing price we have not thought you do not want to chase price you got to understand the order flow you want to use the algorithmic flow smartly by entering on internal liquidity and targeting external liquidity this is just the base of outlining your trade this is the beginning of the base of outlining your trade now that we've come back to the internal liquidity now you want to be seeking an entry and where's the most probable area to come back into the imbalance and the order block and the premium of this price leg and if you don't know what the premium is, the premium is above the halfway point of the entire price swing. Now, just like that, this is your entry point. And then you enter on internal liquidity and seek to exit on external liquidity. But if you are in tune with the algorithm and you have a little bit more time under your belt, you can possibly... If you know where the market is going to go, you can possibly enter with what they call a turtle soup. As soon as you price below this swing low over here, it's okay to buy these sales stops because that's what the algorithm is doing. The uh, Up here, they are selling to willing buyers that's willing to buy in this price up here. And they come back down and they buy from willing sellers who's willing to sell down here the smart money sells in the premium and buys in a discount because they're finding people who's willing to buy up here and sell down here so if you're if you understand that price will more than likely come back to this imbalance and this order block you can buy sell stops down here find willing sellers to buy these sales stops and ride the wave back up. Now, before we move on, I'd like to ask you, what time frame do you think we have been looking at this whole time, right? Looking at all of these moves. What time frame would you say these calendars are? Now, if you said you can't really tell you will be absolutely correct because the candles are going to look the same on every time frame the candles are going to do the same thing on every time frame so just by looking at the candles you can't just assume that's an hourly that's a daily that's a weekly that's a set you can't just assume that by just looking at the candles but this entire time we've been looking at monthly looking at a monthly chart Right. So now let's get into 
talking about framing your trade setup based off of understanding the order flow. The monthly chart, the long-term price action reference for the largest price swing in trading. Trading setups take a great amount of time to form on this time frame, but when they unfold, they tend to unfold over months. Like it, 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 it take a long time for setups to take place on the monthly chart. And this is due to the length of time this chart requires to present a setup. Um, trading in the direction of the most recent setup can yield low risk, high reward conditions. Swings can be several hundred pips over a long time. Right. So with monthly charts, it's going to take a long time for your trade to set up. And if you just look at this one trade right here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's over a year so far before you even get back to the place where you're going to sell. It takes a long time on monthly charts. Now, let's look at this last price leg right here on the weekly chart. The weekly chart is the intermediate term price action reference for the intermediate price action swings in trading. Trading setups take some time to form on this time frame, but when they unfold, they tend to unfold over many weeks. Due to the length of time this chart requires to present a setup, trading in the direction of the most recent setup can yield low risk, high reward conditions. Swings can be several hundred pips over an intermediate term time period, right? So again, these are weekly candles. So these are a lot of weeks in this one price leg that we're looking at. But what do you see unfolding in this price leg here? Right? This was on the monthly time frame. It took over a year for it to come back to the point of you entering your short. Right? And once you entered your short, this is one continuous trade for the monthly time frame from here down to the lows. But with the weekly, you had a few opportunities to take trades on the weekly time frame. Now, moving into the daily time frame. The daily chart, this is the short-term price action reference for the short-term price action swings in trading. Trading setups, they take a little time to form on this time frame, but when they unfold, they tend to unfold over one to three weeks, not like months and months like the weekly and the monthly charts do. Due to the length of time this chart requires to present a setup, trading in the direction of the most recent setups can yield low risk and high reward conditions. Swings can be from 50 to 300 pips over a short time period. As we move into the daily time frame, I want to talk about something called grading the swings. ICT calls it grading the swings. Now, grading the swings is when you break it down into quarters from the highest high to the lowest low. And how you do that is you run the Fibonacci tool from the highest high to the lowest low of the price leg. And then you break it down into quarters. And once you break from the highest high to the lowest low and break it down into quarters, notice how price reacts at all of these different quarter points. Here we consolidate it. There we consolidate it. Here we attacked an imbalance. And here we consolidate it. Price is having some kind of reaction at all of these quarterly levels. And just like on the weekly, the daily offered you several different opportunities to get short. Whereas with the monthly, it was only one short from the top here and you held it all the way through. Now, for your homework, I want you to identify a price leg on the monthly chart. Annotate the low and the high of the swing. Try to find a move that takes place over 12 to 24 months on this monthly time, meaning from the start to the finish or the start to the finish. The entire move, the up and the down. And then once you get that entire move, choose either the buy side where it's going up or the sell side where it's coming down as your swing leg. And once you do that, identify all the internal liquidity in between the highest high and the lowest low for your monthly chart. 
and remember how to save your charts on TradingView. That's what I use for my, you know, journaling. Move to the weekly chart for the same price leg that you highlighted in the monthly charts and identify the different um, price swings inside that range on the weekly, meaning how many different price swings created um, highs and lows before it went from the highest high to the lowest low of the monthly price leg. Identify all of the internal and external liquidity in each swing. Use the same price range for the daily chart and do the same thing again. Identify the different price swings in the daily chart. Identify the internal and external liquidity on each swing. And then if you really overzealous and you want to do the extra credit, go ahead and um, on using the daily chart, identify any market maker buy models or market maker sell models that you see unfold throughout the entire um, monthly range that you identify but identify that on the daily chart if it exists now that concludes this presentation hopefully you found value in episode three of the series and until the next one man y'all be safe out here in these trading streets gone yeah